Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool jukebox video for you this evening. We bought a little while back this really cool Rockola 488 jukebox. This was made in 1982. We got it from a gentleman right down the road and he was having some issues with it. Uh, we serviced it, have it in working, good working condition and uh, are now going to sell it. So we figured we would film this video of it. Now this is the 488. This is near the end of the 45 boxes uh, that uh, Rockola was making, uh, and it was made in 1982. The 488 was fairly popular, so they made several different versions of it. This is the very first version of it, the normal 488. But then they also made a 488-1, a 488-2, and a 488-3. But this is the, the first one, the 1982 one. Some of those other ones were made in 1983. So when we when we got this thing, it uh, needed a little bit of uh, cosmetic work, which we've done. So we repainted the sides, for instance, on the bottom. On the top, I'll show you on this side because it's lit up a little better. On the top, it has the cool, um, you know, faux paneling. What do they call that? Wood grain MDF <laughs> that the game that the cabinet is made out of. It's worn a little bit, but in pretty good shape. Some of that was peeling. We were able to lay it back down and glue it back in place where it looks pretty good. Um, it didn't have the lock to the cash box. So we pried it open, thinking, oh man, we're going to get rich. And there was nothing in it. It was real clean. Of course, the guy wouldn't sell it to us with quarters in it or anything. Who would expect him to do that? Uh, the front plastic here, we cleaned all up. Uh... I think there's only two light bulbs in this game, and they're both working, so we didn't have to replace that. Rockola trim plate. Now, why did, what is that there for? That's so you can take that out, I believe, and put a bill acceptor in there. Um, but we don't have a bill acceptor. It was in 82. Maybe they didn't have the bill acceptor yet, or maybe it went here. I've seen some of the Rockolas that had the sideways bill acceptor. Boy, those are cool. I'd like to get some more of those. And you can see that it says 99 plays. The reason it says that is because we have set it on free play. And it says your selection is lit up. So as I, if you put in a number, well, you have to reset. <laughs> Somebody hit the wrong button. Like if you hit 8, it does that because none of the records start with 8. Right. Uh, the keyboard wasn't working very well so we took it apart cleaned everything if you if you take the buttons apart and clean the contacts inside the button it makes it work flawless like if you can see every time all of the numbers are very responsive I'm doing it like this so that it doesn't accidentally play one right it worked very good uh, and the 99 means it's on free play. It still has the coin mix in it, but to be honest, we didn't even uh, work on that really because every time we sell these, it's for people for their home and they don't want them coin operated. It's real cute to have it coin operated for a little while and then after about two hours, you get tired of putting quarters in it. Now when we got it, someone had installed a button down here that adds credits when you press the button, but there is a setting on the uh, CPU that runs it to actually put it on free play, so you don't need that. Um, it's got a nice, like a blue vibe to it. All right? And it says Rockola 488 Digital Microcomputer Solid State Music System. So it doesn't say it's a jukebox, it says it's a solid state music system. The jukebox companies were funny about that. They would put uh, they would put strange names on things. So like the Seabergs were uh, phonographic, coin-operated phonographic machines or something like that. They, they never wanted to be called a jukebox. That was a slang term, I guess. Like there's something wrong with a juke joint or something. What in the world? So there is a location, top three hits microcomputed. It tells you what the, th the top three hits are in the location. Uh, but that hasn't been reset in a long time, so I think those are just the stock numbers or maybe the battery's dead on it. 
it's almost useless really, but it's kind of cool, I guess. This area here says special bonus when flashing. Basically, you can set up a bonus time where if that's flashing and it says bonus, when you come over uh, then, instead of play, getting like, you know, one song for a quarter, you might get two songs for a quarter while that's flashing or something. Then you could set that up to flash every 10 minutes or every four hours or whatever. Prices, deposit coins, select record number, two for a quarter, five for 50 cents, eight for 75 cents, or 11 for a dollar. And then we've uh, filled it up with records that we had here. There's some decent ones. But remember people, we're giving these records away. So do you really think we're going to give away all of our best ones? This one has this kind of unique look where it the records sit down in there. I mean the 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 uh, selections sit down in there underneath a, uh, a slanted piece of glass here on the front. A little different. Usually they were kind of flush with the glass, but. Wow, it's got a cool look. Okay, so I'll open it up. We can look inside of it, and then I'll shut it back up, and we'll, uh, we'll turn off the lights too so you can see what it looks like with the lights out. But let me open it up and I'll show you all the different components inside of it. We didn't have it latched all the way. <laughs> we'll latch it back here in a minute. We got the key for it and everything. So this keyboard over here folds up out of the way very easily. All right. So there's the removable panel I was talking about. That's the actual keyboards and then that's the display. Okay, so all of that, remember this is 1982, connects over to what they called the Profit Setter Credit Unit. Sometimes these give you trouble, but this one's in good working shape. There are a bunch of dip switches there to change the settings. Another thing I should have mentioned before uh, at the beginning, we get a ton of questions from people about the... Um, about Rockola jukebox repair and what a lot of people don't understand is that even though we say it on all the videos these things were very similar to each other so if you can find um, information about repairing one of them if it's within a few years of the nut of another one uh, the repair is the same so these 480 488s are very similar to the 484 for instance a little different from the 490 but um, this profit setter was used on a few different machines so you can take one out of a different machine and use it too. So if you're looking for like the, the dip switch settings and all of that, if you can find a manual for the machine before it, for like a 480 or a 484 or something like that, it will have the same CPU and the same dip switches and things. This over here is the hit tracker. So this is the thing that runs the three displays here that tells you what uh, were the most popular uh, records in the location. Now that operates completely independent of the CPU that runs the machine. Now the CPU basically sends a little information over to here to tell it what was played and that's it. So you can take this out and throw it in the trash and the box will still work just fine. The only thing that won't work are these three displays. Um, what this was used for was it, it's really to help the operator uh, who really needed to know what people were playing. So like let's say that you know, this is 1983, so let's say the new uh, Eagles record comes out, and you put it in, and nobody likes it, so nobody's playing it. But you think as the operator, man, it's the Eagles, everybody's playing that. And so you go in, and every week, you leave that Eagles record in there, and nobody's playing it. Well, that's a spot that you could put a better record in and make more money. But if you got the hit tracker, it keeps track of that for you. It tells you what the hits are. So, uh, you know, what if what if you come in and the the... Uh, the new Michael Jackson record is they're just burning it up. They done ran the damn needle through it, right? <laughs> Everybody's playing it nonstop. It's all they want to hear. But you're out of touch with reality, so you don't know. You don't know that everybody loves it. So you leave the Eagles record in there and replace the Michael Jackson record. Well, you might have just shot yourself in the foot. You might have just lost $30 a week that that record was making and put in one that nobody's going to play. You know, so if you had this, you, the, the operator knew what was being played, what wasn't being played. So if you, if you brought in a new record, 
you take out one of the ones that nobody's playing and put that new one in there. And uh, that's uh, that's one of the benefits of that thing. So a lot of people think that it's, oh, it's kind of cool. It's, it's not really for the player, even though they display it for the player. They just do that uh, to get a little more use out of the thing. It's really for the operator so he can know how to make more money. Because after all, these were designed to make money. Okay. So the power comes in to the box and goes up here to the power supply. So the, your main thing that you want to look at on these Rockolas is there are three little LEDs in there. You can't see it too good, but you want those LEDs to be lit up. That's giving you your 32 volts, 21 volts, and your 9.6 volts. So the 9.6 volts is what runs uh, this profit setter. See it says 9.6 volt? That's a, it likes being right at 9.6 as well. So there's a little adjustment on there. You can adjust that. I think you test it on the pink wire, which I believe is that one. Right? You can test what that voltage is. You want it to be about at 9.6. If you're off that too much, the profit setter will start doing weird stuff. Right? Um, but you've got the play relay here, which is a lot of what makes the mech work. Um, and then you've got uh, fuses all over this freaking thing. And, it, the Rockolas were good about putting circuit breakers in them, so a lot of times the, one of these will pop if a motor's uh, pushing itself too hard or whatever. Okay, so you got that. There's also a, a mech board down there that helps run the machine as well. And is this the one with one in the front too? Yeah, there's one in the front as well. Um, I could show you that, but um, that actually may be the one of them's the mech board, and I can't remember what the other one's called. Those two boards down by the turntable, you usually don't have too much trouble out of. Usually if you got a problem, it's on this power supply, or on your amp, or on your profit setter. So this is the amplifier. The good thing about the Rockolas is, since they're stereo and they have two channels, a lot of times if you get a problem, it'll just be on one side. And so you can, there's a, there are uh, preamp boards in there that are identical. You can swap those and see if the problem follows or look for blown fuses, etc. What we usually do is just recap the things, replace the capa the electronic electrolytic capacitors on it, and uh, usually get some sound pretty good. You've got a AVC, which means auto volume control. That's designed so that if one record was pressed really loud and one record was pressed really soft, that kind of balances it out. You got a stereo and mono switch. Now, if you put it on mono, it's not going to turn half the speakers off. What it does is it just combines the two signals so that the same music comes out of every speaker. Your pickup input. Most of these had the Sure M44 cartridge in the arm, and it takes a, a M44 needle, of course. There's a scratch filter. A lot of the records that we put in here end up having scratches all over them, skip and stuff like that. But if you put the scratch filter on, they sound a little better. There was also a record EQ switch to change between Europe and standard. It seems like the European equalization uh, has less bass. Why they did that, I have no clue, but you also have uh, left and right settings for bass and treble. So we've got the bass on max, the treble on medium, um, which on this particular amp just seems to sound a little better. You might uh, find different on yours, depending on what speakers you've got in yours. Uh, about the speakers, usually they're not too high-end or anything, so a lot of times you can replace the speakers uh, fairly inexpensively if you have a speaker problem. Uh, but they don't always have a speaker problem. This little board here is the flasher board. That's what actually makes that bonus thing uh, flash and tell you that there's a special sale right now going on on the credits. <laughs> um, there are some buttons on the bottom of the uh, profit setter too that, to add credits and subtract credits and all of that. But that's about what you're looking at. This one bulb lights up the display. It's just for that glass, you know, but it's also the one that's underneath the um, title card whenever it hangs down. And then the other bulb just kind of illuminates the top of it and the lighting behind here. Simple as that. I thought on a lot of them that there was a bulb over here as well. It may have been removed, but uh, like on the 480s and the 484s, there is a, a panel on the side for the light to come out, but on this one it doesn't have that, so it may have been, it may have came like that from the factory. 
I don't know. I can't tell. There's the big old coin mech that comes in them. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to unplug the speakers. Now why am I doing that? It's because if I play a song on YouTube, uh, basically you can't monetize that video. You get uh, like a copyright strike, right? So why, the way I always do it is I will, uh, I'll show you how it works, but uh, I'll play you a song on a separate video that, that I'll upload right after this one. So if you finish watching this one and see how it works, go watch the next video on our YouTube channel and it'll be this thing playing a couple songs. Uh, so I've unplugged that. I'm going to show you how the Rockola mech grabs the record and lays it down. A lot of people love the ones where you can see the mechanism and all of that. Yes, that's cool, but you know, by this time it was kind of old hat, right? So we'll just play the first one. See how the turntable's spinning as well? It gets to the record, which was the first one. Bam! And then it lays the needle down on it. Everything's cool. Let me turn the brightness down a little bit so you can see kind of what it's doing. So I can actually hear it from just the needle noise, but it's not amplified because we've got the speakers unplugged. And so that needle, when it gets to the end of the record and it goes out the run out groove, it hits a little switch over here. And when it does that, it reverses everything and it'll hang it back up. So I can simulate that by just pressing the cancel button on the back of the machine. I can reach it. How cool is that? All right, so I turned off that bulb uh, so you can see it a little better. So I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna, I'm going to, uh, you know, I don't know if, I, if that'll, I think I gotta wait till it starts before I can turn that off. So I'm gonna tell it to play a record again, and then I'm going to stop it as it's going around and kind of tell you what the thing is doing. So let's see, 140, Oh, can't do that. One, twenty. Oh. Okay, so I put in the selection, and the thing talked to the mech board, whichever one it is, and started the mechanism spinning with the motor. Okay, so it's spinning around and it's trying to find uh, that location. Now the way it finds it is there is a little wheel over here. Uh, with a sensor on it, see the little LED light? And it's, different ones do it different ways, but it's it's looking for a specific spot by counting the the revolutions on the, the encoder wheel, basically. So it's eventually going to find the record. And it goes around one whole time. That whole time it was looking at, I, I'm playing 143, so that whole time it was looking at the second side, the two side, the B side. Um, so now it's looking for on the 100 side, which is the A side. Okay, and it found it. So it stopped. Now as soon as it stops, there is a relay underneath the turntable. There's a box down there with a bunch of stuff in it. That relay starts the turntable motor turning. It stops the mechanism from turning, the, the, car uh, the carousel from turning, and it starts the gripper motor, which is this cool looking hook thing here, <laughs> right? It starts it turning. So what it's doing is it's turning this gear here, which is turning, going to turn all, which is going to turn all of this stuff around, right? So as it turns, this gear is starting to turn, these gears are making this do a certain thing, right? And so what it's doing right now is, since it's over the record, it stopped at the right spot, it's making this piston push out, which is making this arm pull in, which makes it grab the record, right? So it pushed all the way in to the point where it's grabbing the record. Now all the records are pretty much the same size, so uh, it moves a certain point, and then now that record is stuck in there because that, pu that piston is pushed in. The way it did that was the gear kept turning. It's just geared to where if that gear rotates, the cam, if it rotates, it makes the other gears do their thing, and one of them pushes the the uh, 
cam out and one of them starts turning the, the arm and all of that, right? So it lifts it up in the air. Well, if it kept doing that, eventually it would bam, hit the, the, plat, the uh, platter, right? So there is a little cam here that's going to push it one way or the other, right? And so it made it rotate because of these little teeth on the back of this thing, right? So now it has turned it around, uh, what's that, uh, 90 degrees? And it's going to lay uh, that record right down on the center of that hole there, right? And when it does, the turntable's spinning, so it starts spinning the record. It's also, this cam here is on the same cam, this little thing, and so it's going to hit the, uh, the little pin on the end of the of the arm to make it move, right? Now, it's still holding the record, so as it continues to rotate, it will push this out so it's not touching that side, and that will make it where the piston has gone in, right? Like that. And this cam is rotated enough that it has set the needle down right on the beginning of the record. You can adjust where it sets down by changing, turning that screw. Okay, so now that it has turned it, set it down, it's playing the record, doing its thing. All right. So when it gets to the end, it'll hit the switch and everything reverses and it does it backwards. And then the, mecha the magazine rotates back to the home position and stops. And that's how the thing works. Pretty cool. There's also a cool little thing here that's just a little brush that actually brushes. Uh, it moves across the, uh, the needle to make sure that the needle's always clean. So watch the little brush. See it? <laughs> And when it's done playing, it'll it'll do it again. Watch. Got it. <laughs> Very cool. It's like they came up with this crazy contraption and just kept adding stuff to it until it's awesome. So that's what you're looking at. All right, so let me, uh, I'll t turn the light back on and then I'll turn the lights in the room off so you can see how the thing lights up in the dark. Very cool. As you can see, it's got a great look to it. You can imagine in an arcade or a, a bar or whatever back in the day, this would really look cool. The, uh, the little title strips are easy to read. Now, back in the day, whenever you got new title strips, I look, it's mirrored on the side too. Uh, back in the day, whenever you got new records, the operators, when they put them in, they would uh, be all different colors and stuff. So all of these wouldn't be all blue like that. They'd be a jumble of colors, right? And you can see how it's got just a nice, a nice vibe to it. So there you go. So I'm going to do a separate video that will come up just after this one. Uh, as soon as you're done watching this one, go check out the next video on our channel. And we'll play a song on it so you can see how the thing sounds with the rebuild amp and the new needle and all of that stuff. So check that out. We appreciate everybody watching all of our videos. If you haven't subscribed to us yet, make sure to. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you and show you kind of how it works. Uh, this is a Rockola 488, but like I said, they're very similar to the ones all around that time period. This is a 1982, um, and this is what things looked like in 1982. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll make sure to, uh, to play you... I'm going to play you an amazing song. You're not even going to believe how great this song is, and I'm going to play you on the next video. So go check it out uh, as soon as you're done with this one. Leave your comments down below. Do you remember seeing this exact box? Huh? What do you think? How's she look? I think it looks great. That's what I think. That's my opinion. But I'm kind of biased. I think they all look great. All right, people. So I'll see you on the next video, which I'm going to record right now. See you there.